there! So today I need to put together an arrangement um, for a sympathy and it's just going to go to the home. So what I'm going to do is I have fresh floral foam placed in this container and you can, I'm going to tilt it so you can see it. So I have a lot of foam in here because it's got a really large base. Um, so I've placed lots of foam. I filled my reservoir with fresh water. And um, now I am going to start um, placing greenery in the container. So I'm going to use evergreen greenery. Um, I have some emerald and we have, or it might be sapphire, shoot, I don't know. We have greenery, Christmas greens. <laughs> and I am going to just base the arrangement with some of these pretty Christmas greens. So it's just a mixture. We get a lot of these greens in, um, in a mixed box and a lot of it is not common to my area. So I have a hard time identifying it. I know that's terrible, but I'm going to just take this greenery and I'm gonna do this in more of a low compact arrangement. I'll give it a little bit of height, but not too terribly much. I'm going to do it as more of a table type arrangement. Now, when you're cutting this greenery with your knife, you need to be careful. So I'm using a floral knife and a floral knife, mine is really more of a paring knife. Um, when you're using your floral knife, this greenery has a really woody stem. So you need to be careful because you can very easily cut yourself. But I like um, a smaller blade knife, just something kind of shorter blade. Um, these we actually just bought from our wholesaler. Um, and I get them in a pack of like, like a six, I think, comes in a pack. I like to have six because I am the world's worst to lay my knife down and I can't find it in the flower shop. So I'll have three or four scattered here and there and everywhere because I can't ever find it when I'm you when I'm needing it. Okay, so I'm going to keep adding my greenery. So this is mean fern, but it is shedding pretty bad. I don't want this to go on her table and shed. So I'm going to place this in the garbage because it's just shedding everywhere. I don't know if you can see it all over my, my sweater. choose not to use that greenery. This is some pine. I'm going to set this one on the floor. And I have some eucalyptus in this bucket. So I'm going to add some pretty seeded eucalyptus. Now how I like to add seeded eucalyptus is I like to break it into several pieces. Now I love the fact that eucalyptus is going to drip down the side of that container and help cover up those edges, kind of soften that edge so it's not just sitting there. Um, so I'm going to add some of this pretty seeded eucalyptus and I'm just breaking it into smaller pieces and tucking it in. So there's our pretty greenery. So it's all um, all the way around in my container. I'm just getting dirty, dirty, but that's okay. Um, next, I am going to come in with some bales of Ireland. So I have some pretty green bales of Ireland. I'm gonna pinch that tip out. And that is just a preference. You do not have to pinch the tips out of your bales if you don't want to. I'm gonna take my floral knife, cut that stem at an angle and I am going to tuck it in. I don't want this arrangement too terribly tall. Um, I just kind of want it creative and pretty. And I'm just pinching that tip out. It just kind of gives it a haircut and makes it look clean. All right, so there's our bales. Next, I'm gonna come in with some pretty stock. 
So I have some peachy colored stock. And I am just tucking that in. So I'm doing almost um, a low profile, kind of long and low, more than I am just an upright centerpiece or arrangement. Okay, so there's my stock. So I have, you can see where I'm just spreading it out throughout the arrangement. Next, I'm gonna come in with my hydrangeas. So I have several stems of pretty white hydrangeas. Hey, Victoria, can you bring me that quick dip? So I am just taking my white hydrangeas and removing any foliage on that hydrangea. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Now the reason we like to remove the foliage is because it helps to keep the head of the flower hydrated. So I'm just taking off any of the foliage so that my flower will stay hydrated. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, I'm kind of fluffing it. <laughs> I'm gonna take my floral knife, cut it at an angle, and I am dipping it in a solution called Quick Dip. Now, what this Quick Dip does is it helps to hydrate, keep the hydrate, keep the flower hydrated. My words won't come. So, I usually take that flower and dip it in that solution for about seven seconds or so. So I cut it at an angle, dip it in the solution. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then place it directly in the fresh floral foam. Um, now the reason I use this solution is because it's going to make this flower stay hydrated and my flower arrangement will last longer or my hydrangeas will last longer. Now you can use other flowers. You can dip other flowers in this solution if you want to. Um, I usually just use it for hydrangeas, um, but I know that people dip it, dip roses and they dip lots of other flowers, but Hydrangeas are really the only ones that I'm the most concerned about. I usually wire my roses, so I don't usually have any problems with those going down. Okay, so I have my hydrangeas, and you can tell I just really tucked those deep down into the center of the arrangement. Or, you know. Next, I am going to come in with some pretty white lilies. Now, my lilies aren't really open. They're pretty tight buds. Um, but I'm going to take those lilies. Let's see. Move my quick dip. And take these buds. And if I can see down in the center of the bud, I'm going to remove any of the pollen. So I'm just going to pull that pollen out. I like to remove all the pollen from my lilies if I can get my hands on it. Now the reason is, is pollen damages that lily. It will um, cause it to be yellow and yucky. And so if I can get that pollen out of that lily, I always try to do that. Well, snap. <laughs> so I broke that, that bud off. I'm just gonna take it, cut that at an angle, and just tuck that right down into that arrangement. I'm gonna do my next one, pull all that pollen out. Now, here is a tip about pollen. If pollen gets on your flower, um, go ahead, remove that pollen, and then take a chenille stem or a, we all, here in Mississippi, we call it a pipe cleaner. What it is, is it's a piece of wire that has, it's fuzzy, a fuzzy little piece of wire that people use for crafting. You take that um, pipe cleaner and you can wipe the inside of that lily and remove that pollen. You can also remove pollen from your clothing by taking the article of clothing, like say I got it on my shirt. You're gonna take that article, that shirt, lay it directly in the sunlight. 
like even in your home like in the winter time it's usually kind of um, dreary but if the sun is pouring into the window if you'll lay it right there in the window in the sunlight that sunlight is going to absorb the pollen from your clothing isn't that interesting but I promise it works um, and if it's warm outside and it's sunny you can lay it right outside on the porch or right on you can lay it in your car window but if it's on your shirt the sunshine will just absorb the pollen strangest thing ever but it works I promise so what I did with my lilies is I went kind of in a diagonal um, fashion across the center of this arrangement with those lilies kind of tuck them deep down into the center next I'm going to come in with a little bit of solid ego I need to sneeze um, Probably those pretty lilies that I just cut. Now the lily variety that I just used is called an oriental lily. An oriental lily is a larger variety of lilies and it has a beautiful fragrance. Next I'm coming in with some solidago and I am just going to pop this color of yellow throughout this arrangement. I'm removing some of the, the blooms I guess. Um, from down low just because it's just so large now what you can do with the pieces that you popped off or you pulled off just take and cut those at an angle and just tuck those throughout the arrangement if you have a small arrangement you can also use these pieces so don't throw them away if at all possible go ahead and try to use them either in your arrangement or in another little arrangement Okay, so there's my solidago or my filler flower. Next, I'm going to come in with some pretty Gerbera daisies. So, they wanted bright colors, so we thought that these yellows would be really pretty and bright. So, I'm going to take these Gerberas. I'm going to remove these little nets. And I'm going to pull my little, um, my little straw off of it. I'm going to take a wire and push it right there into the base of that daisy and I'm going to twist it right around the stem. Now some people like to thread the um, wire up the stem. For me that's too much work. Don't care to do all that and honestly they're not going to see that wire too much. So I'm going to nestle these bright yellow daisies into this arrangement. So just pull that netting off Pull that straw off, place that wire right in the disc of that daisy, twist it around that stem. Now, daisies are not real pliable. So if I try to manipulate his head too much, it's going to pop off. So always remember to be careful when trying to get them to mind you. <laughs> um, because see how this one's kind of bent here? So I'm gonna take that, remove, remove that netting and the straw. I'm going to take the wire and then I'm going to very carefully wire that head. Um, if I try to manipulate it too much, I'm going to pop his head off. So I'm going to be very careful. And a lot of times the placement of where you're putting the, the, the flower can help in how his little head is is bent okay so what I did was I tucked him I'm gonna turn the arrangement so you can see it I tucked him here because his head was kind of bending out towards that direction so you can see it really well over there so I'm gonna do this with every single Gerber daisy that I'm gonna place in this arrangement I'm going to wire cut insert right down into that foam Turn it around so you can see where I tucked him. So see how I've got those flowers just kind of tucked in real pretty. So this arrangement is pretty all the way around. It's important when you do a centerpiece like this that all the flowers are kind of all, it's pretty all the way around is basically what I'm trying to say. I don't even know where my words are today. Um, but you want it to be lovely all the way around so that um, if it's going to be placed on a dining room table, it would be nice for anybody who is on any side of it, okay? 
So this one I tucked in the center. And I think I'm gonna tuck this one kind of deep coming out this side. So I'm gonna turn it so you can see it. I think I'm gonna come here, like right in there with this Gerbera. So I am going to wire him. Now some people don't wire their Gerberas at all and that's completely okay. I don't know, I've always liked to wire them, but I wire roses too. So it might just be Monty wires everything. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Um, but yeah, I tend to wire lots of stuff. Okay. So the only thing is, is that when you want, there we go, this flower to come lower, you can see I'm very carefully manipulating that flower. I don't want to, to pull it too hard because I'm gonna break it, okay? And then this last one, I'm gonna tuck right in this space here, right in that empty spot. So I'm gonna take, look how pretty those bright yellow Gerberas are. They're so lovely. So if you hear something tapping over here, the kitty cat is playing with a toy. He has found a spider <laughs> that I used at Halloween and he is playing with that spider. So there is our pretty focal um, Gerbera. But I kind of have all the Gerberas over here on this side. Next, I'm going to come in with some peach colored roses. Um, I want to say that this is called a shimmer rose, which is just a really soft peach. Now, I'm basically doing exactly what I did with the Gerberas. I'm gonna take a little wire, I'm gonna pop it in, in the bottom of the rose, which is actually called a calyx, and I'm just twisting it right around that stem. Now, I'm going to wire every single rose, and this is just going to guarantee that their little heads are gonna stay standing. Um, sometimes, their little necks get, get limp, and so, if I can keep their little heads standing up, then they look fresher, okay? So, I'm just going to take and wire each of these roses. All right, so I have wired all of my roses. So, each one of them have been wired. So, next what I'm going to do is I believe all of my Gerber daisies are on this side. So, I am going to take greener is falling out of my bucket. I am going to take and place all of my peach um, roses more on this side. So I'm going to take my knife, cut that flower at an angle, and I'm just going to tuck them in here and there on the opposite side of the Gerber daisies. Now, quite honestly, this is just a design choice that I made. Um, you really can't, I mean, you can do it however you would like. If there are any thorns on those roses, just use your floral knife and just go ahead and remove any thorns. And that's just so they don't bite you <laughs> more than anything. Now, lastly, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna turn this arrangement and look at it really quickly. Lastly, what I'm going to do is I have some green dragon foliage. Green dragon's almost a filler flower. I mean, it's just a really pretty, it's a really pretty um, foliage. And so, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this, see how pretty it is. So it's almost, I don't know if I haven't heard it called Penny Crest. I might be wrong. But it almost, when you look at it really close, it looks like tiny little pennies all the way up that stem is the foliage. So I'm just gonna take that, cut it in an angle, and I may cut it in half. So I don't want it to be too bulky in the arrangement. I'm just going to nestle that right down into the arrangement. And it's just giving me a little bit of an airy texture. 
to my flower arrangement. I'm going to take this and you can see how it kind of comes apart really easily. I'm going to take my floral knife, cut that little stem at an angle, and I am just going to tuck it right into my arrangement. It's basically giving me just a different texture and just a little bit of a different filler flower, I think. Now, it's very pretty. Um, I really enjoy working with Green Dragon. The only problem I don't love, the only problem with Green Dragon is it is not very drought tolerant. So, it's never really happy if it doesn't have enough water. So, when you're working with it, you definitely want to be sure that it has plenty of water. So you can't really use it in like corsage work or any kind of work that it's going to be out of water because it's going to um, to wilt. So you just be careful with that. All right. So I've got that green dragon tucked in. And it's just a pretty texture, just another little added texture to your arrangement. All right, and there is our finished centerpiece that will be delivered for a sympathy. Guys, thank you so much for being here with me this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about how I designed this arrangement or any flower shop questions, please be sure to drop that in the comments down below. We're happy to answer any questions you might have. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Hit that little bell down below and you will get um, notifications. So when we have a new video, you'll get a notification. Also, if you like videos like this, check us out over at Facebook. We do videos every day. We do live videos every afternoon. Hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you real soon. Thanks, guys.